Brad, 2020 was a big year on Earth and in space. I have no doubt that 2021 will be just as exciting and I want to hear about it all. Next month, a few space rovers are set to reach Mars. Can you take us through them? Yeah, that's right. You know, it, it should be exciting this year and, and it starts off pretty early. So we saw in July and August, uh, three different missions launched to Mars and they will be reaching Mars between the kind of the 6th and about the 15th of February. So this is the UAE uh, HOPES mission, which will go in orbit around Mars, doing almost daily weather monitoring from Mars. We'll also have China's first rover, uh, Tianwen, uh, landing on Mars. This is their first attempt at a Mars rover. And we'll have NASA's latest rover going to Mars called Perseverance. Now, Perseverance is quite special. It has the ability uh, to look for signs or evidence of biological life. So literally, looking for potential evidence of life on Mars. Now, it's not going to be big, weird things. It may be small things, but that's what it's going to be tasked with. And it's also carrying uh, Ingenuity, which is essentially a helicopter drone. So from about mid-February, there will be two more rovers on the Martian surface, as well as a drone flying around Mars. So really exciting start to the year. Absolutely. It sounds like there'll be some significant developments, especially in that Look, search for life on Mars. But this year we're also going to get two lunar eclipses. When will they be and will we be able to see them from Australia? Yeah, so it's not all about just stuff that's happening far away from us. These two things that we'll be able to see our own uh, with our own eyes. So as you said, we get two lunar eclipses. Now, both of these are visible across entirely of Australia. So a lunar eclipse is when you get the Earth, Moon and Sun. Well, the Earth is kind of between the Sun and the Moon and you get a perfect alignment where the sun uh, casts a shadow of the earth out into space and the moon goes into that shadow and we essentially don't see it. But with the lunar eclipse, when you get a total lunar eclipse, something special happens and that is we get a little bit of light going through the earth's atmosphere, essentially a little bit of sunlight, and it lights up the moon red. So we actually are getting the sunrise and sunset of the earth lighting up the moon. So it's a really special thing, what we call a blood moon. Now, this will happen on May 26, where everyone in Australia can see it um, from about, about an hour or so after sunset local time, probably uh, all the way to about 10 o'clock. And then we get uh, another almost total lunar eclipse on the 19th of November. So it won't be 100 percent, it's like 97 percent cover, but still you won't really notice that you're missing that 3 percent. Um, it'll be an amazing thing. So two total lunar eclipses visible across all of Australia on the 26th of May and the 19th of November. That is what we can look forward to, two blood moons. Brad, in the middle of the year, NASA will be attempting to redirect an asteroid for the first time ever. Can you explain how this will work? Yeah, look, this is kind of one of the more ambitious, exciting missions. When uh, President Obama left the White House, one of the things that uh, they did was commission a report about what are the options if an asteroid is potentially hazardous, so may hit the Earth? What could we do about it? Now, one of those ideas was called DART. So this is an asteroid redirect mission. So the idea is that if you nudge an asteroid far away enough, you just give it a little bit of a nudge and it will sail past the Earth safely. So DART will be launched in the middle of the year, sometime around July. It will go to a binary asteroid, so two asteroids orbiting around each other. And they'll shoot a projectile at one of these asteroids to see can they change its position and orbit, essentially its trajectory, just enough that it doesn't change it completely, but it nudges it far away enough that it could steer it safely in the direction you would want it to be. So it's really kind of a, a Bruce Willis Armageddon-style idea almost here, um, but a, a true idea of can we have an option if we get a very potentially hazardous asteroid that we want to nudge far away enough, and we'll know soon come July. Are there any risks associated with this? Is it dangerous at all? Yeah, so this is a great question because, you know, one of the things is you don't want to do it, you know, for one that may be hitting the Earth and it not work and us end up in trouble. So what they're doing is they've chosen an asteroid really far away from the Earth and quite remote, and they're only doing it just a subtle nudge. And so what they're able to do is by seeing how the one asteroid kind of moves around the other, it will stay still going around it, but they can see how much they change its orbit, how much impact they really have. So it's not like there's a risk of knocking one into the Earth or one into another planet or something like that. So it's a very good, safe option that they're doing with. So kind of the right balance of seeing effectiveness and not 
having some untoward consequences, let's say that. It's incredible. Now, look, this might be my favourite bit of space news that's coming up in 2021. In October, the first fully private human mission to space is going ahead. Where are they going? How will it work? Yeah, look, this is going to be a big thing of 2021 is private space travel. And the first one confirmed is uh, SpaceX's Axiom 1 launch as scheduled for uh, sometime in October. So this will be four astronauts who are all private citizens, private people. They're not space agency members, and they'll be headed to the space station for about 10 days. Now, two of them are, are private people who are paying and training as kind of private astronauts who want to go up and do some things. The other two, one of them is Tom Cruise. Yes, the actor. He'll be going up with his director, and they will be going to film the first Hollywood movie in space. You know, this is kind of this amazing idea that we can now see this year not only private people traveling on you know commercial private rockets but really a hollywood movie partially being filmed in space this will all happen in the uh, the middle part it looks like so far of october when the movie's released i don't know probably sometime in 2022 but definitely something to look forward to Certainly, we need to get you doing a live cross from a holiday out, <laughs> out in space. Also in October, we're going to see the first cargo mission to moon. Is that right? Yeah, and this is kind of going to be a big theme of 2021 this year is a lot of activity around the moon, building up efforts to go back to the moon as NASA's announced and Australia's participating in. And so we'll see in October the first cargo mission. So what this will be, it won't be humans, it will be stuff, supplies to support the first base and settlement, really, when astronauts get to the moon a few years later. So we'll see a lot of these cargo missions and, and equipment starting to be launched to the moon. And the first one is scheduled for October, I think currently the 11th of October. And finally, NASA's Lucy will visit seven different asteroids, and this could help uncover how our solar system was formed. Yeah, you know, we, we saw a lot of asteroid missions in, in 2020, and that's going to continue this year. So Lucy will visit seven different ones. It will be launched, and it will visit seven different types of asteroids. And, and the reason being is we think asteroids are essentially the, the leftover bits of the solar system, the ingredients that didn't turn into planets. And so if you want to know what was present when our planet was formed, our sun, and, and eventually what we become, uh, you need to look at those ingredients. And so by looking at different ones up close and doing lots of different experiments, it helps to unlock some of the clues as the beginnings of our solar system. So there's lots of exciting things in store for 2021, plus like every other year, uh, lots of exciting discoveries that we don't even have planned yet that will be announced this year as well. Yeah, sounds like there'll be some big discoveries in 2021, some exciting news happening in space. Brad Tucker, as always, thank you for joining me. Take care.